Hey everybody, so it's been a while since the last time I posted any videos here and you can check the description for the reason for that. Today I'm going to make copper metal out of copper sulfate root killer and a few other very easy to obtain materials. So the first step is to combine copper sulfate with household baking soda, uh, sodium bicarbonate. And so what I'm going to do is I have 30 grams of copper sulfate crystals, you can see they're a very nice blue color and 20 grams of baking soda. And so the first thing I'm going to do is dissolve the copper sulfate into a solution of about 75 milliliters of water. Copper sulfate is, is very soluble in water, so you, you shouldn't need too much to dissolve a good amount of it. You can see it's already starting to turn the solution blue. So here's the copper sulfate solution. Uh, I guess I overestimated the solubility of, of the copper sulfate, so I, I ended up bringing the volume of water up to about 180 milliliters and transferred it to a larger flask. So now I'm going to add the baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, and one of the products of this reaction is carbon dioxide gas, so there will be a lot of fizzing and bubbling. So I'll add it fairly slowly. Hopefully that doesn't go over the top. <laughs> Alright, that's a close call. I'll add a little bit more slowly than that. But you can see it's generating a lot of bubbles. And the product, copper carbonate, is uh, a very light blue, sort of a teal color. So that's, that's the color that you're seeing right now, as well as from the bubbles. And actually, while I'm doing this, uh, we'll throw in a little bonus. I can prove that it's carbon dioxide gas by doing the gas test for carbon dioxide, which is you take a lit splint and immerse it in the gas, and if it's carbon dioxide, it puts it out because there's no oxygen to fuel the fire. So we'll keep adding this until it's all been added. And uh, I'll wait until the reaction settles down. So this is pretty much done reacting. Uh, copper carbonate is very insoluble in water. So you can see here that it's settled to the bottom quite nicely, leaving a layer of water above it. So what I'm going to do now is filter off the solid and collect it for the next step of the experiment. So I'll mix it back up so I can pour it out easy and pour it into the filter paper. Okay, so after filtering and drying the copper carbonate, I managed to recover 16.7 grams of it, which is what I have right here. Uh, and I'm going to, the next step is to mix that with carbon so that I can smelt it into a copper metal over a fire. So I'm going to combine my 16.7 grams of copper carbonate with about 10 grams of, of carbon, which I have here, which I got from a fish tank filter, actually. It's activated carbon, so it should work pretty well for this purpose. What I'm going to do is take this container and put it on a fire and we'll heat it strongly for 15-20 minutes and what will happen is the reaction will go between copper carbonate and carbon 
will produce carbon dioxide gas and copper metal. So this is essentially smelting from the copper carbonate. So here we are in my makeshift backyard furnace. Uh, it's just a charcoal grill. So what I'm going to do is take the copper carbonate and carbon mixture that I've made previously and suspend it over the fire for 15 or 20 minutes. And what this should do is initiate the reaction between the two, which will produce carbon dioxide gas and copper metal. So as the reaction proceeds, you can see the whole entire mixture darkens. As, hopefully, copper metal is being formed. Here are the final products of the reaction. It's not quite what I was hoping for. Uh, I thought it was going to turn into uh, basically a molten puddle of copper metal, but uh, it appears that you can see uh, some of these pieces have sort of a brown color to them, and I imagine that has to be the copper just uh, sort of plated onto the outside of the, the uh, remaining carbon pieces. Interestingly, I started with 16.7 grams of copper carbonate and 10.4 grams of carbon. Uh, which gave me 27.1 grams total. Uh, after the reaction is complete, I now have 19.6 grams of product, which means I lost 7.5 in the reaction. So 7.5 grams of, of mass escaped as carbon dioxide while this reaction was taking place. So it definitely did something, just not quite what I was hoping for. So a little anticlimactic, but uh, I hope you got the gist of it. Thanks a lot for watching, and it's good to be back.